We were born right here, in the Australian bush. For horses and me. My horse was like a brother to me. I cared for him, and he looked after me. On his back, I thought nothing bad could ever happen. Then came the Great War. The world was on fire. Britain and its allies on one side, fighting Germany and the Ottoman Empire that was holding Palestine, the Holy Land. We Aussies joined in. The Kiwis too. They called us ANZAC, Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. And we fought alongside the Brits. So I joined up with my horse, like all my friends. We sailed halfway across the globe to get to the battlefields. Crowded together, the smells were awful. Gallipoli, one big cemetery. More than 55,000 men were killed on our side. It was the same with the Turks, but they didn't break and held to their positions. We had no choice. We left Gallipoli and returned to Egypt. In Egypt, I was reunited with my horse. I think he'd felt what I'd been through. I don't know how. If he could cry with all the excitement, I think he would have shed a tear. But we had little time for emotions. We crossed the Suez Canal with the British Army into the Sinai Desert and Palestine on our way to carry out what even Napoleon failed to do capture the land of the Bible from the Turks. Lads, this is uh, Dave Mitchell, Corporal Taspool. Hey, right. Scotty Bolton. Dave. Chillabins. Where are you from? Melbourne. A city boy? Not really. I'm from Preston, you know, an outer suburb. My dad's got a dairy farm. Oh, it makes all the difference. I suppose we better go fix you up with a horse. Not bad at all. Only trouble is Turks don't stand still. Neither do rabbits. <laughs> But the way we fought at Romani and in the rest of the Sinai, well, we sure showed them what the Anzac spirit was. You should have seen us. Cavalry, sir. They are not cavalry, Captain. They are Australian light horse, mounted infantry. You can tell them by the plumes in their hats. They're formidable soldiers, but the English don't know how to use them. We were pushed back in Gaza, twice. The prickly pear hedges almost killed us. We just couldn't get through. In the first battle, we rode into town, but got an order to go back. The second battle, well, I'd rather not talk about that. Because of the disaster in Gaza, we got stuck in the Negev for six bloody months. No more fighting the Turks. We dug trenches in the terrible heat breathing in the dust, and the flies and the bloody lice. We scratched all day and night and hardly slept. We didn't stand a chance against them. My horse also suffered, but he took it bravely. 
He'd come with me from the other end of the globe and I knew he'd go with me wherever I'd go, like my mates in the section. I remember that morning when just out of the blue, a German biplane came flying. I knew right away what I had to do. Sorry about the horses, Sarge. Oh, sorry. No, we'll have them rounded up in about ten minutes. They're alive. Thank you. Yeah, good on you, mate. Months went by. We were desperate. We thought this war will never end. Then the Brits sent over General Allenby. He was tall, he was tough, he was vigorous. Seemed he was everywhere well, around the know, clock. The we admired the bull. Our spirits went up, and not just because he allowed us to take off our uniforms in the summer heat. The Desert Mounted Corps will circle around Bathsheba and attack from the east, from the desert. It's our responsibility to capture the town's wells intact. How will we carry enough water, sir? Brigadier Grant's asked the key question in the entire operation. The answer's simple, gentlemen, we won't. Of course, every man has his water bottle, one quart, but there'll be nothing for the horses until we capture the wells at Bathsheba. They'll have to go 24, perhaps 30 hours without a drink. And if we fail to take Beersheba in one day? We cannot fail. The tension was huge. Will we surprise the Turks? They're never gonna believe that it's possible to move 10,000 horses in the desert if we don't take Beersheba's water wells, if we get stuck without water, we're done for, I reckon. We'll move to cover in the wadi down there. Sergeant Major? Yes, sir. Commander Smoke, off saddle for 20 minutes, then remain in readiness for immediate movement. 31st of October, 1917. At dawn, the British forces attacked Beersheba from the west. They suffered heavy losses, but took the Turkish positions west of the town. The New Zealanders dismounted and attacked the Tel El Sabah strong post, guarding the city from the north and the east. The Turks fought tenaciously. Tel El Sabah was captured only in the late afternoon. But the work was not completed yet. Beersheba had not been captured and it was getting late. I just don't know how our horses survived so many hours without water. Unless we take the wells of Bathsheba intact, we not only face defeat, but a military disaster. What are your views? Sir. Yes, Grant. 
I believe my brigade could take the town if given a free hand. I must know what you propose. To make a mounted charge against the eastern defences, sir. I have two regiments, the 4th and 12th, close at hand. General Chevelle, if there's to be a charge, then surely it must be made by my cavalry, who are armed with swords. Brigadier Grant's men are mounted infantry. They are for Gerald. We're constantly reminded of that fact. 60,000 men have failed to take this town in 12 hours. How can 800 horsemen possibly succeed in less than one hour? You don't believe they can do it? No one has ever attempted a cavalry charge against entrenched infantry supported by machine guns and artillery. It's unheard of, sir. Do you see any alternative in the time available? Well, no, sir, but Very I... well. Put Grant straight at it. Oh, I reckon it's going on. Buggery fine, eh, mate? What's going on? We're gonna charge Bathsheba, mate. Cavalry, they're Australian light horse. Oh! Wait until they dismount, then fire by order! Meters.
Babe! I don't think I can move! Then try to... Stretch your barrel! I miss them all very much. My mates, my horse, even after all these years. <laughs>